sketch the graph of f of x equal to x to the fourth power minus 8x cubed. We have a list of items that we work through when we're sketching our graph, so let's proceed. First, the domain. Since I have a polynomial, my domain is going to be all real numbers. Here, if I stick a point in for x, something sensible always comes out. Next, we can look for zeros of our function. So if we factor, we'll see that we'll have zeros at x equal to 0 and x equal to 8. So we'll mark them off on the x-axis, so here and here. Next, we can check the behavior of our function as x goes off to plus infinity and as x goes to minus infinity. To do that, we just check the lead term in the polynomial, so it's going to be x to the fourth power, and then the behavior of our function is the same as the lead term. So since x to the fourth, that goes off like this, we'll have as x goes to plus or minus infinity, our function is going to go off to plus infinity. So that just means pointing up. Now, that's as much as we can do without taking a derivative. So let's do that. So our derivative is going to be f prime equals 4x cubed minus 24x squared. I can factor a 4x squared out of that, and I'll be left with x minus 6. So we're going to have critical points at 0 and 6. We've already plotted the point at 0, so I want to plot the point at 6. I put it into the original function, and I get f of 6 equals minus 432. Plot that on our graph here. Now note, this isn't going to be the scale. We just want a rough sketch of our graph, so that'll be good enough. And I also point out that when I want to get the point that's on the graph, we have to stick our point 6 back into the original function. If I stick it into the derivative, I know I'm going to get 0 because that's how we got the 6 in the first place. Okay, I have my critical points, so I'm going to draw in a box, and then I'm going to cut at x equal to 0, x equal to 6. If I want to know the regions of increasing and decreasing, what we're going to do is we're going to check a point in each region. We'll apply the first derivative, and then the sign that comes out on each point determines whether the region is increasing or decreasing region. So the points we're going to check, minus 1, 1, and 10. Let's see what happens. At minus 1, we'll have 4 times 1 times minus 7. So that's negative. So our first region is decreasing. If I put 1 in here, I have 4 times 1 times minus 5. And again, our middle region is decreasing. And if I put 10 in, I have 4 times 100 times 4. That's positive. So we're going to have increasing on our last region. So I'll fill in my boxes as so. Next, the second derivative. So here we're looking for inflection points and regions of concave up or concave down. So I take our second derivative, we get 12x squared minus 48x. So we can factor out a 12x. What's left over is x minus 4. So our zeros are going to be x equal to 0, x equal to 4. We have a new point at x equal to 4, so we plot it. I put 4 back into the original function. That's going to give me f of 4 is minus 256. So we plot that point. So that's going to be right here. Again, we're not to scale, but we want our two points here to be relative to one another in the right spots. So that's pretty much a good guess of where it might go. Now, let's check for regions of concavity. So as with increasing and decreasing, it's going to be enough to check a point in each region when I cut off my regions by 0 and 4. So I can use the same points, minus 1, 1, and 10, put them into the second derivative, see what comes out. If I put minus 1 in, I have 12 times minus 1 times minus 5, that's going to be positive, so we're going to be concave up on that side of 0. If I put 1 in, 
I have 12 times one times minus three. It's gonna be a negative. So we're concave down in the middle region. And then on the last region, we're putting in a 10. 12 times 10 times six. That's gonna be positive. So we're concave up over here. We note at the point x equal to four, the concavity is gonna change. So that's gonna be an inflection point. Now, I have everything I need. So now it's just a matter of connecting the dots and then we'll have our graph. So let's see what's happening as I go region by region. My first region is gonna be decreasing concave up. So decreasing concave up, that fits there like that. Okay, and that goes off to plus infinity as predicted. Next region, decreasing concave down. So we connect our points at x equals zero to x equals four, decreasing concave down looks like this. Next region, decreasing concave up. We're connecting the points at x equals four and x equals six. So this is gonna be decreasing concave up. So it'll look like that. And then for my last region, I have increasing concave up. So increasing concave up. That goes up like that. And we make sure we hit our zero at eight. So that's gonna be the graph of my function.